Hey, hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Well, let's take a look at the Keynesian aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram. And this video is built or made to give you a way of remembering how exactly to draw this diagram from the beginning. Because so many students make mistakes on just not creating or labeling the diagram perfectly from the beginning. And so I invented this ridiculous way, really, of remembering how many components you need to have on the Keynesian aggregate demand aggregate supply diagram. And they are nine. So this is the rule of nine, the Keynesian aggregate demand aggregate supply diagram rule of nine. And this is the third of a progression of these videos that I've done. If you've been following the whole series, you might remember back in microeconomics, we had the rule of 11 for the demand and supply diagram. And then in the neoclassical model, we have the rule of 10. Now we have the macro Keynesian aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram, and it's the rule of nine. So that's 11, 10, nine, a really easy, simple way non-scientific, I completely made these things up, but a, I think a really effective way for students to remember what to do on the diagram. Okay, so let's take a look. So here it is, the Keynesian model, right? And if you don't understand why the, 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 the aggregate supply curve looks like this and the logic behind the Keynesian philosophy, check out the video called Keynesian Logic. Um, that will give you all of the information you need to really understand like what Keynes was thinking and then how then it builds into your understanding of economics today if you get a problem. But that's another video. Today we're just going to talk about, or in this video we're going to talk about, like, what are the nine components? Here they are. Really simple. You notice that the average price level in the currency here is the same as the neoclassical model on the vertical axis. And over here you have real output, which could be real GDP. That's another label you could have down here. Real output, Y, and real GDP are the same thing. Okay, so it could be real output down here, or you could have real GDP no matter what. You just need to know that there's some component that you have to remember. So what are, what is the Keynesian rule of nine? Well, check it out. Here's number one, average price level. You need to have that on the vertical axis. Number two, you need to have a currency. Pick a currency, always make it the same currency. Most IB questions are in dollars or they're in euros. Use that symbol, don't change it, don't be complicated. Just remember, you need to indicate what currency you're going to use. You need to have PL1, which would be the average price level 1, the, the, ag, the, um, the original equilibrium price level. You need to have a 0. You need to label the, the horizontal axis Y. It could be YF if you're talking about where it's in full employment, or it could simply be Y1. You need to label the horizontal axis as either real output or Real GDP, either way, they're correct, but you just remember to, need to remember to label it. So that's component number six. You need to have an aggregate demand curve, AD1, and that's component number seven. You need to have, of course, the aggregate supply curve, and, and maybe it would be helpful if I named this or I labeled this um, rather AS1, right? So in case you have an AS2, you know that it's always there. And then lastly, the ninth component, you have to make sure that you have a title of all of your diagrams all throughout economics. So what are the Keynesian rule of nine? Well, they're right here, my friends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you are asked to draw a Keynesian aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram, you need to get to nine before you even start addressing the problem. Rock on. There's a really simple, easy way of making sure that you start off with perfect diagrams. If you don't, you've already lost marks before you even get into the, into the question, which is going to ask you or ask you to analyze and evaluate some economic situation. Okay, so there you go. The Keynesian aggregate demand, aggregate supply, rule of nine. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.